So, like, what is K-pop? K-pop is. It's bright lights, vibrant colors, crazy concepts. Everybody has to dance. K-pop is what? K-pop is. It's about the fans. Fans are everything. Such a thing to the fans. I'm always happy to see them. K-pop is. 음악적인 부분뿐만 아니라 비주얼, 아트워크. K-pop은 정말 힘들고. 어떡하지? 나 너무 아픈데 나 그냥 진짜 기절해서 자고 싶어. What is K-pop? K-pop is huge. Korean pop culture is the third largest export industry for Korea. K-pop supergroup Super M gets Billboard's Grammy nod. I'm joined by K-pop sensations Blackpink. The global phenomenon. BTS here. It's become the new normal for Korean music acts to have a billion YouTube views. So the next question probably should be, how did we get from the traditional Korean popular music to this phenomenon? Itaewon is the Harlem of Seoul. The hate Asbury, the Sunset Strip, all rolled into one. In a sense, you can say that Itaewon is the birthplace of modern K-pop. I'm Kim Hong Tak. I'm a lead guitar in the keyboard. I was a leader of the first group. I was a leader of the first group. This is the B-8-8 in the U.S. and the U.S. was a leader of the U.S. and the U.S. was a leader of the U.S. and the U.S. 시장이었다고 생각을 해요. 저희 그 락밴드들한테도. 우리 세대들은 아마 그 여러 가지 우리나라의 그 장변, 말하자면 해방, 유기오, 커다란 그 사회적인 변화, 그런 걸다 겪은 세대고요. 또 음악적으로도 해방 직후에는 이제 우리나라 가요계가 나라를 잃었던 서로운 같이 그다음에 이제 유기오 직후에 미군이 한국에 많이 들어오면서 큰 변화가 생기게 된 건데. 음악에서는 그 당시에 뭐 락앤롤 음악이 주류였고요 미국은 당연히 젊은이들이기 때문에 락 음악 같은 걸 주로 하게 돼 있죠. 미 팔군 무대라는 거는 한국 뮤지션들한테는 절대적인 직업. 미 팔군에서 일할 수 있는 거는 최고의 직업이었거든요. 자세하게 기억은 안 나지만 대통령 월급 부럽지 않다고 그랬어요 그 당시에. I'm Jinju. I play guitar. I'm in a band called DNCE. I'm in America, originally from Korea. That's me. <laughs> I grew up listening to all these amazing blues, funk, rock guitarists. I'm a big fan of um, Shin Jung Hyun and Kim Hong Ta from Key Boys. He's one of the amazing guitarists that came out of that generation, like 60s, when it was like a lot of struggle because in that era, Korea 
went through so much. Ah, 그 생각하기도 쉽지 않을 정도로 아주 예 슬프기도 하고 또 끔찍하기도 하고. 박정희 대통령이 독재 정권을 이끌면서 우리나라의 그 불행한 정치적으로도 그렇고 사회적으로도 너무 혼란스러웠었기 때문에. 많은 젊은이들이 특히 대학생들이 독재 정권에 대한 대모도 많이 했었고. 젊은이들이 좋아하는 것들을 다 봉쇄하려고 그런 게 아닌가 이런 생각이 들 정도로 운이 없으면 지나가다도 경찰한테 잡힐 수도 있고 그래서 머리를 잘리고 그런 그런 시절이 있었죠. 대부분 락밴드들이 많이 그 잡혀 들어가고 그러다 보니까 락밴드들이 꼭 무슨 죄인 같은 기분 또 심한 사람들은 고문도 당했다고 그러고 가장 중요한 거는 음악밖에 모르는 사람들이 음악을 할수 없다는 거 그거는 뭐 정말 너무너무 그 기가 막힌 이야기거든요 뭐 그건 돈이고 명예고 그런 다 문제가 아니라 삶의 의욕을 다 잃어버릴 정도죠 음악을 못하게 되면 그런 이야기 중에 가장 슬펐던 거는 뭐열 사람을 부르면 너는 뭐 어떻게 해준다 이런 말 들으면 서글펐죠. 그게 뭐 동료들을 팔아먹어야 되지 않습니까? As a musician, it's really heartbreaking. Like all these artists and players that I look up to, they went through that struggle. I look up to them even more. They had to go through a lot of stuff, and you know, I'm thankful that they didn't give up. and they just keep on going. The last year after the pandemic, after the pandemic, especially the Chun Jung-hyun, Jang Hyun, Park In-su, and the other people, and the director, Kim Jong-mi, 그 당시로서는 굉장히 이제 앞서 있는 개념의 음악들을 선보였었고 밸런스의 차이가 있지만 모방과 재해석이라는 게 섞여서 이루어지던 시기이기 때문에 재즈나 소울, 사이클렐릭 록부터 포크라든지 아 이게 정말 한국의 대중음악이구나 할수 있는 요소들을 그 당시에 많이 확립을 해놨다고 생각해요. 많은 뮤지션들이 활동을 정지를 당하고 음반이 회수되거나 금지곡의 낙인이 찍히고 음악들의 전통이 좀 끊기기도 했었고 This was a golden age, a golden era of Korean rock music. What might have been was crushed. by the military dictatorship. The government dictated what was going to be played on radio, and more importantly, what couldn't be played. Musically, it was very much the dark ages. But then something happened. Election fever has produced a remarkable demonstration of democracy for a nation with virtually no experience of the ballot box. We must get a real democracy. And then in 1988, the Seoul Olympics came to Korea. A spark was lit, and a torch was passed to the younger generation. The Olympic flame, which burns in South Korea's capital city, signifies the emergence of a country which has become the new economic miracle of the 20th century. The opening of the 24th Olympic Games is expected to attract a quarter of a million visitors to Seoul. Olympics have been done once again, it's a kind of international country. People have a lot of pride, 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 a lot of 그리고 문화적인 변화가 있었던 시대였던 것 같아요. 근데 이제 그게 90년대 초반, 
89, 90, 91. 막 요때가 이제 시작이었어요. 음악이나 패션이나 트렌드나 새로운 음악들이 쏟아져 나오는 그런 아주 흥미진진한 시대였죠. 나이트클럽 같은 데 가면 미국 음악들, 유러피안 음악들, 댄스 음악들 뭐 이런 음악들이 흘러나왔었거든요. And the movement was in e t a w a n In e t a w a n a lot of clubs were like hotel clubs in the basement of the hotel. I would come to, the, come to Korea during the summertime. And I, yeah, I was a minor, but like if you're from the States, they kind of let you in to see what it's like. And that's how I was first uh, introduced to like the Korean dance culture. I was like, wow, the nightlife is really, really awesome. It was very European, so it was like Euro disco. 이 타운 길에 쭉 전부 다 나이트 클럽이 있어요. 전부 다 거의 다 들어가는 입구부터 막 안에서 쿵쾅쿵쾅 거리잖아요. 근데 막 가슴이 막막 막 뛰는 거예요. 그래서. 근데 문이 딱 열리면서 막 거기 이제 외국 분들 막 토끼 춤 추고 있고 막 로저베이트 춤. 와 이거 진짜 너무 신세계다 여기는. Moon Night. That was like where all the hip hop dancers, rappers, you know, anybody who was aspiring to be into the into the hip hop culture was hanging out. There's a lot of hip hop going on there because of the whole military base there. You know, there's dance battles going on there. It's like one of those things where they took us to a club in the middle of the night in e t a w a n opened the door and we were like sort of like kind of zapped into this new world. There was like a whole new side of Korea that I didn't know existed at the time. My name is Jay Chong and I'm a member of the group Solid. Uh, I was born in Seoul, Korea, moved here uh, to LA when I was uh, in third grade, not knowing a word of English. <laughs> so first time I went back to Korea was 92 when we went to uh, do the solid thing. Initially we went there as sort of like this, you know, hip hop, R&B kind of trio. So like we wanted to sort of bring that to Korea where we incorporate like some rap, R&B, pop, all of it into the, uh, one package. Our first album was like literally just nine demos that we had on my four track tape recorder. So here it goes. <laughs> uh, this is so embarrassing. It's a very Western type of melody, just very, like just kind of, you know, the chords are just kind of like very simple and, and there's a lot of ad living on it. simple melodies, almost like too simple. <laughs> so our first album like completely tanked. So like the Korean public didn't really get it. It was unfamiliar to them. We were almost like about to pull the plug on the whole thing. So my, my dad gave me like $4,000 at the time, you know, and it was a big deal. Uh, we were just sitting in a hotel room, like the three of us all together, sort of like trying to figure out what next. <laughs> You know, and we watched of these Korean shows. Like, we had nothing else to do. And I used to watch and go, wow. Sort of the common denominator in all the songs in Korea was what they call feel. <laughs> feel. Comes from like, uh, like the old uh, trot music. But at the time, what was really popular was music that your parents liked, trot, which is basically like Korean country music. In Korea, they would call it trotu. Trotu means trot, or in another way, it's called bongjak. So you have the bongjak melody going. That melodical aspect played a big, huge role in the song to make it hit. The emphasis of melody was very, very big. Like what I realized was like the melodies were, it was moving up and down a lot. So it's almost like you have to write the melody first before you lay down the beat. So when it came back, I just completely had a whole set of like new ideas. And our second album sold two million records. First album sold like two. Biggest hit 
Our second album was uh, Yiba Mekutur Jaku, was our, our ballad. When we got introduced to the public, we got introduced at a singing a ballad. So initially we went there as sort of like hip hop, R&B trio. And then when we, when we debuted, we had suits on and we were singing ballads, you know, like, like R&B ballads on stage. Yeah, solid is K-pop. That intricate Korean melody mixed with Western beat is sort of like the identity of what K-pop is. The rhythm is distinctively Western, and then the melody was very Eastern. So that's that's sort of what we introduced in the early 90s. I think we had 10 songs on the album, and like eight songs were on the charts in the top 40. <laughs> R&B 뮤직이 한국에서 어떠한 형태로라도 가요에 영향을 끼치지 못했을 거예요 아마. 모든 걸 잊고, 이 밤에... I, I think that was sort of the beginning of what I call like sort of singer songwriter self-produced bands. So Sateji uh, produced his own music, it's just like us, samplers and synthesizers, and he banged it out in his bedroom, you know? And that's his first album. You know, Lee Hyun-do from Deuce, same thing. Everybody was producing their own music. What people know as K-pop now, what I consider sort of like the modern K-pop is, I think it started from Sateji. And that was sort of like the introduction of hip-hop, rap, rock, you know, all those fused uh, with, with Korean music. <laughs> Korea at that time, 93-94, obviously it was Sateji and boys. It was more than just hearing Sateji and boys for the first time, it was seeing them for the first time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 찾잖아요. 거기에 굉장히 이게 뭐라 간지러운데 긁어줬던 친구들이 아니었나. 그 친구들은 근데 처음 딱 나왔을 때 너무 제대로를 갖고 와가지고 갑자기 진짜 흑인 음악 같은 걸 누가 갖고 왔으니까 이해가 안 돼요. 아직 그 신남을 모르니까 우리나라 사람들이. 그 소태지 와이들의 첫 무대라고 회자되는 그 무대가 있잖아요. 정확히 말하면 첫 무대는 아닌데 어쨌든 가장 유명한 최초의 무대 중 하나인데 신인들이 나와서 이제 퍼포먼스하고 심사위원들이 평가를 하는데 박수로 청해 듣겠습니다. I <목소리도> 굉장히 새로운 음악이었고 파격적으로 들었던 기억이 나고 근데 심사위원들한테도 사실 그렇겠죠. 자 그러면은 심사평을 좀 들어보겠는데 하광원 씨부터 좀 먼저. 네. 네 요새 어, 유행하는 랩 스타일의 댄스 뮤직인데요. 예. 어, 동작을 너무 관심을 두어서 그런지는 몰라도 동작 속에 노래가 조금 묻힌 것 같은 그런 아쉬움이. 그때 나와서 별로 점수를 좋게 못 받았어요. 굉장히 낮은 점수를 받았거든요. 7.8점인가 그랬는데 저희가 그거를 이제 실시간으로 봤거든요. 예, 그 기억하는데 어, 굉장히 뭔가 점수가 낮네. 그날 밤 심야 라디오 프로그램들부터 
나날료가 계속 나왔습니다. 그렇게 해서 그단한 번의 주말 동안 그러면 라이징 그 자체를 했던 거죠. 저희가 그첫 방송을 직접 봤었는데 그때 음. 그 임백천 <웃음> <웃음> 거기 계신 이제 음. 평가하시는 분들이 완전 어 이게 뭐 전전지 뭐 음악이냐 뭐 하여튼 음. 막이 그래서 되게 점수를 낮게 받았는 정말 다음 날 학교에서 전부 뭐 저를 포함한 모든 음. 전 교생들이 다 서태지 아이들 얘기를 했었고 이 나라를 흔드는 임팩트였다고 보면 되니까 네. 서태지와 아이들의 축하 공연입니다. 이게 뭘까? 그런 모습 어릴 적에 이렇게 보면서 어? 나도 한번 해보고 싶다. 레코드 가게에 가가지고요. 카세트 테이프도 사서 집에 혼자 막 듣기도 했었고 그러다 보니까 뭔가 저거는 내가 하면 나도 더 멋있어질 것 같고 스타가 될것 같고 이제 서태지와 아이들의 무대를 보고 똑같았어요. 다른 아이들처럼 노래 따라하고 랩도 따라해보고 You know, it's what the youth needed. It wasn't even just about their music. It was their personality and how they dressed. It was an immersion of everything about them. And the youth in Korea, most definitely, I think we're yearning for that. So Teju and the kids are still in the fight. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 애환과 고통을 공감할 수 있는 내용들이 어, 가사에 담아져 있고 서태지 아이들은 사랑 얘기보다는 시대사를 많이 반영하고 그리고 학생들의 심리를 너무 잘 나타내요 결정적으로 공식이 무너지는 순간이 돼버린 거죠 서태지 아이들과 그전 시대 When you listen to the album, there's so many different styles of music. In one album, you know, I mean, there's straight up rock song, hip hop song, pop song, ballad song. I think that is what K-pop is. Yo, 부분이 지금까지도 효과를 보고 있다는 거죠. 그런 음악들을 사실 K-pop이 많이 이제 차용하면서 커왔다고 생각하거든요. 이제는 이제 그게 또 한국만의 스타일, 케이팝이라는 스타일로 또 변형되고 자리 잡힌 것 같은데 거기서부터 어떤 말 그대로 어, 대중음악이, 한국음악이 혹은 뭐 요즘 얘기하는 케이팝이 메시지를 갖고 하나의 문화로 만들어지기 시작한 첫 번째 스텝이 아니었는가 H.O.T.가 시초라고 할수 있죠. 아이돌이라는 자체가 되게 생소했던 시절이고 자고 일어났더니 유명해졌다. S.S.는 사람이 아니다. 요정이다. When we first saw them on the shows, it was like, yo, that's what we want to do. The first idols provided a preview of what the future of K-pop was going to look like. 